G'day guys, welcome back. I am Matt, this is Brett. We are from Carmec Revive and today we're going to answer a few questions and do a little how-to video. Today's one is what wheels and tires do we use and how do we fit them? Excellent. Let's get to fitting these wheels and tires up for our awesome mate Stephen. Stephen, the hired gun, the fastest camera in the West. Look out for him, don't blink. Excellent. Let's get to it. So in this how to, we are going to fit these front tires, these rear tires to these wheels that we have here. The front tires that we're going to be fitting are a wet or treaded tire. The size of these tire, of this tire, sorry, is a 10 by 4.5 by 5. Then the tire that Matt has there is also a front tire, even though we're using them as rears. It is also a 10 by 4.5 by 5. Later on, probably in the next video, we're going, going to go into, I suppose, in depth why these particular tires are used, but just for the sake of this video, these are the tires that we're going to be fitting to these wheels right here. So I suppose we should also mention the particular wheels that we use. These are a five inch diameter go-kart wheel and they're 180 millimeters wide. That is outside to outside or 175 millimeters wide inside to inside. These wheels are generally uh, referred to as a wet uh, rear wheel and we happen to use them on the front and back on our drift carts. We've used them in the past on, on slider trucks, all types of stuff and we need to stretch these tires onto these wheels. Let's show you how to do that. Okay guys we're moving on to the fitting of the tires to the wheels or rim depending where you're from. So there's plenty of different ways that you can do this, as you've seen on YouTube before, or if you want to look it up, there's lots of different ways you can do it. You can Harry Potter this onto here. Sometimes it doesn't always work. This is the way we do it. As we do it, we'll explain why we do it this way. Mr. Tire Fitter. Let's fit some tires on some rims. Generally, because we are fitting quite a few tires onto quite a few wheels, we basically made this little jig that sits in the vise and we're gonna lock our wheel to this just so it doesn't move around. It's worth, I suppose, pointing out if you've never changed tires, if you look at one of the go-kart wheels or any car wheel, for instance, we're gonna have a sharp sloped side and we're gonna have this kind of mellow slope side. The tire is always going to go on from this sharp side, not this mellow side. So when I put it into our jig, I'm going to have this sharp side facing up. We're going to clamp it down. Probably start off with one of the softer wheels. Okay, so Matt's got the wheel. You could put it straight on. We're gonna use a little bit of tire lube. Now, if you don't have any tire lube or you don't have a tire change machine to be able to use the lube that comes with the machine, you could use a bar of soap or a bit of hand soap or a bit of dishwashing liquid just to help slide the tire on. So, a bit of tire lube. We're gonna put a little bit, little bit around the inside of the tire. I'm just gonna flip it. Go on the other side. We're also gonna put a little bit underneath or where the bead is on the go-kart rim or wheel, sorry. People in the US getting cranky. Mm. Don't mm. call it a rim, we keep getting told. Yeah. Okay, bit of lube on the rim. Now, these ones are gonna go on pretty easily. They're a brand new tire, they're very soft. So, what we wanna do is, 
kind of on an angle, we'll do it so you guys can see. We're just going to push and give it a bit of a wiggle and it's going to pop on like such. I'm just going to tighten that down a little bit more. Now to get the last side on is a little bit more difficult. Normally I'll do this facing myself, but we'll try and do it facing the camera. What we actually want to do is I'll probably get Matt to hold down a little bit on this side and I want to get the bead of the tire tucked under that sharp kind of edge of the, of the wheel. So Matt's going to hold there. I'm going to use my thumbs and I'm going to push in and it pops straight on. So these ones are going to be somewhat easier because they're a brand new tire. You can see that there is quite the gap there. We're going to show you how to fix that later on, but this first wheel and tire is fitted. Let's get on to fitting the others. Matt's holding another one of the rims. I'm going to grab that off him and he's going to grab one of the other tires. What is the problem with these tires, Matthew? So these tires are second hand. Normally they've been sitting around in some bloke's shed for the last however long. The sidewalls on these are pretty, pretty hard compared to a brand new wet tire. They're not as flexible. They don't like to be compressed as much. Like if you go to dig your thumb in it, you're not going to move it a great deal. A little bit more tricky to fit. So as you'll see, we'll run you through it. I suppose the other reason we could ask, answer, the other thing we could answer really quickly is Matthew, why are we going to run this tire on the back of Stephen's cart? So we're going to run this tire on the back of Stephen's cart because it has been sitting outside. It is hard. It is old. It's not super grippy. We've found if you put a lot of grip into the back of these carts, they will do a backflip. Not do. what you want. We want them to slide. We don't want them to do the wheelies. Wheelies are cool, but not when you land on your noggin. Yeah. So. I suppose the other thing we should point out then is obviously these, this wheel and tire setup we're using on our polished concrete track, which is pretty slippery. So we can, we don't have to run a sleeve, which we're going to talk about in the next episode. So in the next episode, we're going to look at different wheel sizes, different tire sizes, different tire compounds, sleeves, and how we are going to fit those sleeves, whole bunch of extra bits and pieces. Yeah. So we're going to fit, this tire now onto another one of the wheels, the same size as the last one we did. Matt's going to lube it up. What you might also be able to notice on camera is even though both these tires are the same size, they're actually pretty different. So if you've had a much to do with go-kart tires and wheels in the past, uh, tires from brand to brand in the exact same size actually vary quite a bit. So these particular tires, as Matt said, are really hard. We are probably going to struggle now to get this on. I actually need to put a bit more lube on that wheel because we're going to need plenty of lube on this one. We're going to come over and again, Pull that first side on. This one's going to be a bit more tricky. It's also a little bit more difficult because we would normally do it from this side. So we've got the first side on. I'm going to jump on this side. Matt's going to jump on this side. We really need to dig our thumbs in and we need to get this side wall and this bead down underneath this edge in order to be able to pop the tire on. Bear with us, this may be a little bit of a struggle as it's going to be kind of back to front. So I'm going to get Matt on this side to force that side down. I'm going to get around a bit. As you can see, old, hard, crusty tire, quite an amount more effort to get it onto this rear rim.
So we've got all of our tires fitted onto our rims. Matt's gonna go ahead now and remove all the valve cores. You may be able to see the two front tires that are fitted to the exact same uh, wheels. And you may also be able to see the one that we stretched with some timber is a little bit, I suppose, more opened up than this one here. Now, we only had that timber in there for two days. Obviously, if you leave it in there for a couple of weeks, it will hold its shape a lot more. So, there's still quite a bit of a, a jump in this one. When Matt's removed those cores, we're gonna jump over onto the floor, probably put some safety glasses on and get about actually getting these tires to fit properly. All right, so we're now moving on to the blowing on of the tires. We are using a Canon or a Bazooka. They are a pressure vessel, so they can be extremely dangerous if not used correctly. We have had an incident in the past where someone has had a wheel let go. I won't go too much into it, but it didn't end well. So we use safety equipment. So we use earmuffs or earplugs. Doing this is not acceptable. We use either a face shield or safety glasses at the bare minimum. Once again, these are not safety glasses. Although they do look cool and will get you a girlfriend. Moving on, Brett, what is next? We've got a little bit of a setup in front of us. When you see how this works and if you wanna know how to build your own kind of setup like this, we're happy to show this in a later video. What we have is obviously our tire cannon, as Matthew has said. We also have a kind of a foot pedal valve that we have plumbed in to compress there. So the compressed air is going to come in. Basically, when I uh, press on the foot pedal, it's going to put compressed air out through the hose. We've then got the hose connected to the tire and rim combination. We're also using one of these special uh, nitto fittings. This is a nitto fitting to a threaded, I suppose, valve stem type thread. What this allows is a full flow of air from your airline into the tire wheel setup. So obviously Matthew earlier removed the valve cores. I'm gonna screw the fitting onto the valve. So the reason that you remove the valve core is it is actually a restriction and you can't force as much air in at the rate that you need to, to blow the tire on. So you need pressure in there once yep. that blows to. So this exact same setup is a setup that we use for stretching tires onto our very wide wheels on our drift cars. And it works awesomely for these go-kart wheels. So. The speed inflating fitting is now screwed onto the valve. I'm going to take my air that's coming from my pedal, connect it. The next thing I need to do is charge or fill my cannon. So before I do that, I'm going to grab my safety glasses. Okay, so glasses, earmuffs on, we're going to charge that cannon. What? So I'm filling up the cannon to about 100 PSI. I think it's around seven or eight bar. Remove that. I'm gonna pass the cannon off to Matthew. This particular one, instead of having a valve we need to crack, it's just a button operated one. So Matthew's gonna hold that off to the side. Keep going. Now, what I'm actually gonna do, I've got my tire, I've got my wheel, we've got our valve sitting here it's important that i hold the edge of my tire up over that valve so that when the air races in instead of racing out here to atmosphere it is actually caught by the edge of the tire so i'm going to hold this with one hand like that so it's covering the valve with my foot i'm going to apply pressure into it and then when i tell matthew he's going to fire the cannon in this side what you're probably not going to see, that we may be able to slow down, but maybe not, is when he fires the cannon, the tire is actually going to pop open like this, 
and catch on the bead. So I'm going to hold the tire over the valve. I'm going to press on the pedal. Then when I give Matthew the symbol, he's going to fire the cannon. Also take special notice to where Brett's hands are. His fingers are nowhere near where the tire actually yeah. seats. Don't so, place your finger in there. Unless you want to lose the end of it, if they're too yeah. long. Let's get on it. So, holding the tire, pedal. We've got the tire to seat on both sides. In the case of my pedal, I'm having a look, I've got about 60 psi pressure, it's dropping a little bit. We've got our tire now to seat on our wheel. At the moment I've got about 30 psi, I'm going to put a bit more into it, up about 40, 50 psi. I've got my valve stem screwdriver here. I'm going to release the fitting, screw in that inner valve, and then I can remove the speed inflator fitting. So, a bit more pressure, again about 40 to 50 psi, remove the nitto fitting. Put that valve core back in, and I can remove my speed inflator fitting. So, it's probably also worth noting, you don't necessarily have to be that quick, I'm going to remove that valve core and this tire being a new tire and very soft and stretchy will probably actually stay on that wheel. So let's have a look. So I've removed the core and the tire has managed to stay stretched onto this size uh, wheel. If we tried to stretch this onto a wider wheel, it would probably pop off. So this is about the widest rim you can put that on where it'll stay on even when flat. So the next thing we're going to do, anybody who knows go-kart tires will know that over time they lose pressure. They tend to leak. So now's an awesome time to grab a bit of tire sealant and we can put a little bit of tire sealant into that tire put the valve core back in and then pump it up and then later on down the track this particular <coughs> wheel is never going to have a slow leak so Matt's got the tire sealant any particular brand doesn't matter it's only a small tire so we only need a small amount so absolutely no sponsorship by who's this slime or anything let's put the nozzle on. Would you like to be slimed? Because <laughs> I have a cousin that works for Nickelodeon. <laughs> okay. I only want to put, again, a little bit of the tyre sealant into the tyre. If we put too much in, if we need to take this tyre off, it could make a mess later on. So, just a little bit. Get it on there. And... Cool. I'll put some sealant in the tire. Again, not necessary if you don't mind checking your tire pressures every now and then. But if I put this in the tire now, it should hold pressure for quite some time without having a slow leak. Put my valve core back in, tighten it up. This one is now ready to go other than pumping up to the correct pressure. We'll jump ahead and fit the other tyres and give you a look at the end. What we may find with these last two wheels that we're about to do, because these tyres have previously been fitted, they're pretty close to going on. Rather than using the cannon, I might just try putting a bit of compressed air into it and it might jump. If we needed to give it a little bit of a helping hand, we could put a ratchet strap around the outside to squeeze the tire in order to flex it open and you probably find that it's going to go straight on. The other thing that we might find because this is a very old hard tire is it might actually need quite a bit of pressure to get it to fully bead or pop onto the rim. So onto the wheel. Sorry America. Let's um, PP on and put some air in this. Of 
this one didn't. Count him, Matt. Is that charged? Count Might get in and show a little bit of a close up. So we're fully beaded on this side. If we come over, have a look at the other side, it's fully beaded. Obviously, it took a little bit of pressure and a little bit of effort then to get this particular old hard tire to fully bead on this rim. Now, how much pressure did we actually just put into that? So that took up to about 100 PSI to get that to fully bead. It did have to sit there for a little bit for it to pop on. That is a lot of pressure to put into these tiny little wheels. Even though they're small, that's a lot of pressure. That could do a lot of damage to you if something were to happen. So take extra precaution when doing that if it requires that much pressure. Yeah. Be 100% sure, you know, PPE, glasses, possibly a face shield, earmuffs. You know, we don't want to say that we recommend this. We do it a fair bit. This is generally what it takes. It does take that amount of pressure to get it to go on. Um, we have heard of other people out there, Jimmy, call out to Jimmy, putting some tires like this onto the next size up uh, wheel. And in his particular case, it was 140 PSI. That kind of pressure, we, yeah. We don't want to be anywhere near it. Um, we're, we're not comfortable doing that. Yeah. We don't recommend doing that. Um, yeah. Again, older tires, kind of crusty, took a bit of effort. Newer tires that are generally soft, or if they feel soft to the kind of touch, if you dig your thumbnail in, will generally pop on a lot easier. So let's get the valve core put back into this uh, rim and have a look at all the wheels that we've put together. We're gonna to jump back in time. We're gonna imagine that we're on the ground, we're fitting the tires up and we don't have a bead blaster to be able to force the tire open to make it fit on the wheel. What we can actually do is this particular tire, I've figured out how much I can stretch the tire open. I've cut four pieces of timber and I've wedged those timber, uh, pieces of timber inside the tire and forced it to be as absolutely stretched as it can. Now, what I would normally do is take this tire, sit it somewhere in a hot, dry place. A lot of the time lately, we've just been putting them on the roof of the shed. Leave them up there for a week or two You'll find then when you take them down and you pull the timber out of the inside of the tire, that the tire will stay in that particular shape instead. All right, so we've had a few people also ask some questions that we're trying to answer, which is the point of these videos. And one of them is, geez, why guys? How come you stretch the tires instead of having them square? So I suppose to answer that, there's no real good reason for why this is useful, I suppose. We mainly do it because it looks cool. It looks sick, like. Looks very, 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 very cool. So, I suppose if you ask some of the old race car guys when tires used to be pretty soft, they would sometimes stretch a narrow tire onto a wider wheel. So this would give a little bit less uh, movement in the sidewall of the tire because it was kind of locked on. Now, go-kart tires and wheels are pretty small. There's not really much movement, you know, laterally left and right in the tire. We really just do it because it looks cool. Um, You'll also find that 
Another application like with our drift cars as we talked about before, the reason that you put a stretch tire on a drift car is because for stance and for looks, you hang the rim outside of the guard or flush with the guard. Yep. Doing that, the tire then destroys the guard. So you stretch the tire up to make the guard come down and just pretty much if you get it perfect, you won't be able to fit anything at all between the tire and the guard. I suppose the other thing is when you put a stretch tire on a go-kart wheel like this, on our drift carts it gives them kind of that mario kart look they're like a little bit cartoonish and um yeah they're kind of funny to look at yeah. so if in a future video you'd like to see how to make that foot pedal kind of valve setup that we've made that we use for fitting the go-kart tires that we also use for fitting uh, or stretching tires on our drift car uh, let us know in the comments and we'll make a video on that the next video so the next video is going to be on What different size? Wheels are available what different size tires are available what size tires we recommend to go with the sleeves and What sleeves are out there? What sizes are they? How wide are they? What are the diameter of them? We'll basically cover sleeves tires and wheels so that'll be the next video. Then if you guys are keen to see it, video three would be uh, how to make that foot pedal, how to possibly make a bead breaker. So that is how to knock the tire off the wheel. And we could also show you how to make the peg that we put in the vise that holds the wheel and tire. If you guys wanna know how to make that, we'll knock one up out of scrap, video it, and show you guys how you can make your own. That video would also include how to dismount the tire as well. Yeah. So, so we haven't covered. if you're keen to see any of those things, or if you've got any other questions or something else that you that relates to wheels and tires, let us know in the comments, and we'll try and include it in one of those next videos. But for now, like, subscribe, hit that bell thing in majiggy. We're going to show you what these do out there on our track. Let's get out to the track. Yahoo! Yahoo! Alright, so we've just thrown the same wheels and tyres on my thrash cart as what we just fitted to Steve's rims just before. We're just about to give it a quick test on our private test track here. Let's get to the burnouts. off to see if it's got a safety seal. Look at that, it's got a safety seal. Squeeze it harder. Remove the safety seal before you try and put the goop in. Close, done. It easy, it only took five minutes.
in an unnatural environment. Cleaning. <laughs> Cleaning. This is your job. This is the job of dad. This is not the boss's job. Down. Yeah, what was that? Was that the unknown route? 